I love the shills regarding this. So Canada wants uh, broadcasters to register for podcasts and streaming. And, and it's interesting because you get like all these shills on, on Twitter, which I don't know if they don't understand it because they never lived in places like Eastern Europe or Nazi Germany or Benito Mussolini's Italy, you know, like places that genuinely controlled information and the government was very interested in determining how people think about any subject. And, and, and they used the power in order to squash criticism of the government. Like, regardless of what the government did, the, the worst example, I think, is Chernobyl. The Soviet Union squashed information about it. They squashed information when the nuclear power plant exploded. They lied about it. They lied about the harmful effects. They lied about the cause for it. Right, and, and the only way they could do this is because they had strict control of the media. Like, even if you were a person that lived in that area and, and you would go to a mainstream media outlet, they would refuse to publish the things that you were saying. So, th this is how it's done. Like, like, literally, that's how the Soviets did it, and this is how Nazi Germany did it. They would require media companies to register with the government. And when the media company was stepping out of line, they could withdraw the license. And by withdrawing the license, you weren't able to publish things. The, the, the interesting thing is that you got like people on Twitter who, again, like maybe they don't understand this. And they believe that, well, what is the problem with it? It's just a registration. Uh, you pay a fee. You give your personal uh, account information. Like, like, what is the big deal? And again, the big deal isn't in the registration. It's not even in the information that you're giving. The big deal is that you are required to have a license to broadcast. And the moment that you upset the government, they can take away that license. And if they take away that license, you're not allowed to broadcast. Especially in a country like uh, Canada. And we saw the abuse of power that the government did with the truckers by seizing their bank accounts. The idea that you believe that the same government is going to be unwilling to pressure podcasters in order to not talk about certain topics is absolutely ridiculous. Now, what's interesting is that uh, there is a new defense for this, and apparently is the fact that, well, they're not going to ask individual users. So they're not going to ask Joe Rogan to register. Uh, they can ask Spotify to register. And I'm thinking, like, you do realize that's literally the same thing, if not worse. Be be in fact, I would say it may even be considered worse. Because if Spotify has to register, then it can be pressured by the Canadian government to fix the Joe Rogan problem. So they can literally be told, look, you either get Joe Rogan to stop talking about these topics, or we are going to ban Spotify from Canada. And they can do it. And now the company has a choice. Now, of course, if it's someone like Joe Rogan that brings Spotify a lot of money, they can just say, well, okay, well, then just ban Spotify off of Canada. But if it's like a smaller streamer, if it's uh, someone else that criticizes Canada, I mean, there's a lot of uh, Indian podcasts on YouTube that criticize Justin Trudeau. Uh, some of them are making allegations and accusations against him. So, you know, if they tell YouTube, it's like, hey, you need to ban this guy or ban this other guy. I mean, they can literally do it because they will be like, we don't, I mean, if the choice is between not doing business in Canada or just banning like a random bloke that has, I don't know, 500,000 subscribers, we're just going to ban the random bloke. Now, it's also interesting because uh, I do believe that this can be used to bully some companies, but not others. So in the case of Spotify, maybe. In the case of Google, I don't know. I think it de it depends on the request. Like if it's a request that YouTube thinks it's reasonable, like like for example, they want to ban me because or or short fat otaku, they they don't like us. I mean, sure, but in the case of some Indian podcasts, probably not because then the Indian government can step in and they can say, all right, well then we want you to ban this other guy from Canada that's making fun of India. Uh, so I I don't think like YouTube wants to be placed in that position. Especially when uh, the Canadian market isn't really that big. I mean, Canada is a country like what? The size of Poland when it comes to human population? Like, this is not really that big of a thing. It's more about prestige, I guess, right? Because like, if you get banned from Canada, it looks bad. So, but, but like when it comes to dealing with the markets, I think that the Indian market is, uh, you know, a virgin, untapped market. And there is no way that uh, YouTube or any other company would want to upset India. 
So, so again, uh, the, the reason I'm saying this is that uh, if you look on the internet, like many podcasts that are critical of Canada are based in India. Like, like you, you have Indians that are criticizing it. And there's a lot of podcasts, especially left-leaning, that are criticizing India, and some of them are from Canada. Uh, so if YouTube were to like do this and say, like, all right, well, because of the Canadian government pressuring us, we got to remove, we got to ban this person that's criticizing Trudeau, and, and it's an Indian podcast... Well, then the Indian government can go, well, hold on a little bit. Like, why can't we play by the same rules? And you, you understand why companies really don't prefer to get involved into this shit? So it, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how it's enforced, basically. I, I think it's going to mostly be enforced against Western and Canadian citizens. Uh, so if you're, like, uh, from Canada and you're criticizing or maybe, you know, you're talking about the trucker protest or you're, you're encouraging a different protest against, like, some government legislation... Yeah, I think like the, the Canadian government will pressure the private company, which can do whatever it wants. But in this case, it will have to suppress the information coming from um, the people that Canada doesn't like. I, I think definitely this is how it's going to be used. It's going to be used to oppress Canadians first and foremost. So apparently the new uh, online streamers and podcasts will soon be required to register with Canada's broadcasting regulators. And is raising confusion and concerns about heavier regulations that may be coming. I mean, this is like the, the main problem, right? Like, the direction is not towards liberty and freedom. The direction is to more centralized control and power for the government. And, and this, unfortunately, is happening in most Western countries. So late Friday afternoon, uh, the commission announced that in Canada, uh, services operating with $10 million or more in annual revenue in this country will have to register before November 28th. And registration involves uh, providing the legal name of a company, its address, blah, blah, blah. And again, it's it's pro it's a very light burden, but but the problem is that like like th there's two issues to take into account. Number one, as they said, there may be heavy regulations coming, and the fact that people agree with this, they can agree with a little more. And the second one is like they can take away your registration, your license, and then you can't operate. the The best example that I heard from a friend of mine is uh, the government is like being in an abusive relationship. Like being being a member of uh, of an authoritarian government is like being in an abusive relationship. So so imagine like your wife asks you for ten thousand dollars, right? And you're like, get the fuck out! I don't have ten thousand dollars. Leave me alone. And the next day she comes and she's like, okay, well, uh, can you give me five hundred at least? And you're like, no. And she's like, okay, what what about like two hundred? And you're like, oh, okay, I'll give you one hundred. Fine. And the next week she comes up and she says, well, the, the 100 wasn't enough. Can you give me 200 more? And you're giving it to her, right? So eventually she keeps asking for more and more and more. And, and before you realize, you're, you're giving her like $1,000 a month. And then she asks for 1500 and you're annoyed and you're like, no, no, enough, enough. Like, I, I already give you too much. And now she knows that if she asks for 1000 that's the limit. Right? So it's the same with the government. Like, they will try to push for things more and more and more until eventually people will say enough. And when people say enough, that's when the government knows, all right, well, this is the limit that people can take. Let's go back to what was acceptable. And then they can try later on to push for more. But anyway, right, let me know what you guys think. And as usual, I will see you in the comment section. Take care.